if you don't like Adam Sandler, I understand. His movies are absolutely a mixed bag. Some are fantastic, others are dumpster fires. But there's one Adam Sandler movie that I found to be almost universally enjoyed, and that's the movie The Wedding Singer. I personally really enjoy this movie. There's a moment in the movie when Adam's character, Robbie, who is the wedding singer, has decided to get a real job because he's been told being a wedding singer is maybe the reason that his ex doesn't want to marry him. In his search for a job, he applies to a bank, and when he's asked if he has any experience, he says this. No, sir, I have no experience, but I'm a big fan of money. I like it. I use it. I have a little. I keep it in a jar on top of my refrigerator. I'd like to put more in that jar. That's where you come in. I think lots of people can relate to Robbie. In fact, I myself am not a savvy investor. In general, my financial literacy extends to three rules. Don't spend more than you make. Save for long-term goals. Be prepared for a rainy day. The investments I do have, I am very hands-off with. Not because I don't care about how they do, but because I trust the people who handle those few investments. I occasionally look at how those investments are doing. Are they growing or shrinking? Is all of the money I've directed to them going where I thought it was? For the day-to-day -day finances of my household, I have a budget that I'm intimately familiar with, and I know where every dollar will go before it goes anywhere. But I know my strengths, and long-term investment is not one of them. I let someone who's good at that do it for me. So when I read the parable of the talents in Matthew 25, I need to be honest. I can relate to the first five verses really well. Listen to them. For it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. He who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them. And he made five talents more. So also he who had the two talents made two talents more. But he who had received the one talent went and dug in the ground and hid his master's money. Now after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. See, I can relate to the man who leaves his money in the hands of others to invest. I can relate to the servant who's genuinely worried about losing his master's money. I can even imagine the faces of the first two servants because in my mind, they look a lot like the people I trust with my hands-off investments. The master has business. His business requires that he be about that instead of managing these sums of money. So he gives the first servant five years worth of daily labor wages. He gives the second two and the third one, one. And when he returns, the first two men have done something with what they've been given. They, they grow it. The third, while not losing the money, has done nothing with it. And the parable continues. And he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents. Here, I have made five talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. This was repeated for the servant with two talents. And then the third servant comes forward. Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered no seed. So I was afraid. And I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, you have what is yours. But his master answered him, You wicked and slothful servant, you knew you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I scattered no seed. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and at my coming I should have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to him who has the ten talents. For to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. Cast the worthless, worthless servant into the outer darkness. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. We may read this and find ourselves afraid of the final language, weeping and gnashing of teeth, if we don't invest towards some return. We rush so quickly to the end that we miss what the master says. He would have been happy with just the interest 
that came from putting the money in the bank. God has given you things of value. And I pray today that those things will be obvious to you and that you will decide to take what God has given you. Maybe it's a sharp mind. Maybe it's a a compassionate heart. Maybe it is actual physical goods. But regardless of what he's given you, I pray that you hear the point of this parable. Do something with what God has given you. His expectation is not for you to double what he's given you, though wouldn't that be fantastic? His expectation is that you don't take the gift he's given and stick it in a hole. Do something. Work with what God's given you. Maybe you don't feel that you're a savvy investor, but he won't be disappointed if you at least do more than stick your gifts in a jar on top of your fridge.